Maya drowsy with the noonday heat, flew leisurely past the glare on the bushes in the garden, into the cool, broad-leaved shelter of a great chestnut tree. On the trodden sward in the shade under the tree stood chairs and tables, evidently for an outdoor meal. A short distance away gleamed the red-tiled roof of a peasant's cottage, with thin blue columns of smoke curling up from the chimneys. Now at last, thought Maya, she was bound to see a human being. Had she not reached the very heart of his realm? The tree must be his property, and the curious wooden contrivances in the shade below must belong to his hive. Something buzzed. A fly alighted on the leaf beside her. It ran up and down the green veining in little jerks. You couldn't see its legs move, and it seemed to be sliding about excitedly. Then it flew from one finger of the broad leaf to another, but so quickly and unexpectedly that you might have thought it hadn't flown but hopped. Evidently it was looking for the most comfortable place on the leaf. Every now and then, in the suddenest way, it would swing itself up in the air a short space and buzz vehemently, as though something dreadfully untoward had occurred, or as though it were animated by some tremendous purpose. Then it would drop back to the leaf as if nothing had happened, and resume its jerky racing up and down. Lastly, it would sit quite still, like a rigid image. Maya watched its antics in the sunshine, then approached it and said politely, "'How do you do? Welcome to my leaf. You are a fly, are you not?' "'What else do you take me for?' said the little one. "'My name is Puck. I'm very busy. Do you want to drive me away?' "'Why, not at all. I am glad to make your acquaintance.' "'I believe you,' was all Puck said, and with that he tried to pull his head off. "'Mercy!' cried Maya. "'I must do this. You don't understand. It's something you know nothing about,' Puck rejoined calmly, and slid his legs over his wings till they curved round the tip of his body. "'I'm more than a fly,' he added with some pride. "'I'm a housefly. I flew out here for the fresh air.' "'How interesting!' exclaimed Maya gleefully. "'Then you must know all about human beings.' "'As well as the pockets of my trousers,' Puck threw out disdainfully. "'I sit on them every day. Didn't you know that? I thought you bees were so clever. You pretend to be, at any rate.' "'My name is Maya,' said the little bee rather shyly. Where the other insects got their self-assurance to say nothing of their insolence, she couldn't understand. "'Thanks for the information. Whatever your name, you're a simpleton.' Puck sat there tilted like a cannon in position to be fired off, his head and breast thrust upward, the hind tip of his body resting on the leaf. Suddenly he ducked his head and squatted down so that he looked as if he had no legs. "'You've got to watch out and be careful,' he said. "'That's the most important thing of all.' But an angry wave of resentment was surging in little Maya. The insult Puck had offered her was too much. Without really knowing what made her do it, she pounced on him quick as lightning, caught him by the collar, and held him tight. "'I will teach you to be polite to a bee,' she cried. Puck set up an awful howl. "'Don't sting me!' he screamed. "'It's the only thing you can do, but it's killing! Please remove the back of your body. That's where your sting is!' "'And let me go. Please let me go, if you possibly can. "'I'll do anything you say. Can't you understand a joke? A mere joke. "'Everybody knows that the bees are the most respected of all insects, "'and the most powerful, and the most numerous. "'Only don't kill me. Please don't. "'There won't be any bringing me back to life. "'Good God, no one appreciates my humor.' "'Very well,' said Maya, with a touch of contempt in her heart. I'll let you live on condition that you tell me everything you know about human beings. Gladly, cried Puck. I'd have told you anyhow, but please let me go now. Maya released him. She had stopped caring. 
Her respect for the fly and any confidence she might have had in him were gone. Of what value could the experiences of so low, so vulgar a creature be to serious-minded people? She would have to find out about human beings for herself. The lesson, however, had not been wasted. Puck was much more endurable now. Scolding and growling, he set himself to rights. He smoothed down his feelers and wings, and the minute hairs on his black body, which were fearfully rumpled, for the girl bee had laid on good and hard, and concluded the operation by running his proboscis in and out several times. Something new to Maya. "'Out of joint, completely out of joint,' he muttered in a pained tone. "'Comes of your excited way of doing things. Look, see for yourself.' The sucking disc at the end of my proboscis looks like a twisted pewter plate. "'Have you a sucking disc?' asked Maya. "'Good gracious, of course. Now tell me, what do you want to know about human beings? Never mind about my proboscis being out of joint. It'll be all right. I think I had best tell you a few things from my own life. You see, I grew up among human beings. So you'll hear just what you want to know.' "'You grew up among human beings?' "'Of course. "'It was in the corner of their room "'that my mother laid the egg from which I came. "'I made my first attempts to walk on their window shades, "'and I tested the strength of my wings "'by flying from Shiler to Gotha. "'What are Shiler and Gotha? "'Statues,' explained Puck, very superior. "'Statues of two men who seem to have distinguished themselves. "'They stand under the mirror.' one on the right hand and one on the left hand, and nobody pays any attention to them. What's a mirror? And why do the statues stand under the mirror? A mirror is good for seeing your belly when you crawl on it. It's very amusing. When human beings go up to a mirror, they either put their hands up to their hair or pull at their beards. When they are alone, they smile into the mirror, but if somebody else is in the room, they look very serious. What the purpose of it is, I could never make out. "'seems to be some useless game of theirs. "'I myself, when I was still a child, "'suffered a good deal from the mirror. "'I'd fly into it and, of course, be thrown back violently.' "'Maya plied Puck with more questions about the mirror, "'which he found very difficult to answer. "'Here,' he said at last, "'you've certainly flown over the smooth surface of water, haven't you? "'Well, a mirror is something like it, only hard and upright.' The little fly, seeing that Maya listened most respectfully and attentively to the tale of his experiences, became a good deal pleasanter in his manners. And as for Maya's opinion of Puck, although she didn't believe everything he told her, still she was sorry she had thought so slightingly of him earlier in their meeting. "'Often people are far more sensible than we take them to be at first, she told him.